Number 61. Propionic acid, which is C2H5CO2H, with a Ka value of 1.34 times 10 to the negative fifth, is used in the manufacture of calcium propionate, a food preservative. What is the pH of a 0.698 molar solution of C2H5CO2H? Okie dokie. All right. So they're asking for the pH value, right? So I kind of run through all the equations in my mind that have to do with pH, and only one comes to mind. pH equals the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is hydronium. So in order to answer this question, if I want to solve for the pH, I first have to get an H plus concentration. So that's like the thought process here. I would first have to get an H plus somehow. And then from there, I could just easily use the formula to go to pH. Beautiful. Okay. Now, they're giving me Ka values, and they're starting me off with a 0.698 solution of the propionic acid. Any time that we see a Ka value, we need a balanced equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out. Now, with acids, and it did say propionic acid, and they're giving me a Ka, the A stands for acid. With acids, so C2H5CO2H, with acids, you could do a little trick because instead of saying, okay, plus water, yada, 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 acids, you can just disassociate one hydrogen off of the compound. And generally speaking, the hydrogens that are bound to the oxygen are the acidic hydrogens because oxygen is more electronegative. So if I break this apart, this would be my anion. That's, that's propionate, right? They're saying that, okay, we're going to use that and, you know, combine it with calcium to make a food preservative. So it's going to be C2H5CO2, and since I lost a hydrogen, that's minus. And then since the hydrogen is existing by itself, that's H+. And, oh, look at that. There's the H+, that I need to solve for. So I'm, I'm getting somewhere. We're on the right track. Okay, but now they're saying that I have a 0.698 solution of just the propionic acid. Didn't say that I had any propionate, didn't say that I had any hydronium. So this amount, they're just telling you that you're starting off with this, literally starting, that's the same thing as an initial. And we learned from last chapter, the equilibrium chapter, that if they give you initials and they give you K values, you got to do an ice chart. So let's start it off. I-C-E. Down the line. Down the line. Dandy line. Beautiful. Okay. So I stands for initial, whatever they told you. Well, they only told me that I had 0.698 molarity of the propionic acid. So that goes here. 0.698. And remember, the ice chart is only used for molarity or pressure, but since we're dealing with capital M's, that's molarity, so we're good to go. Now, did they say anything about this propionate or the hydronium? No. This Ka value is separate. No concentration there. So I didn't start with any of this, and none for the H plus either. C stands for change. How much did the initial change and how much for the, you know, propionic acid, and how much did it change for the propionate and the hydronium? Well, remember, you can only go up from nothing. If you have nothing, you can't take anything away. So for the ones that start with zero, you know that that side has to be plus. You can only go up from there, which means that for your reactants, it's a minus. Do we know by how much? No. So use a variable. We're going to pick x. So minus x plus x and plus x. And a good thing with acids and bases is that they're all going to be a one to one to one relationship. So you don't have to worry about like negative x's, you know, minus two x or plus three x. It's just going to be minus x and plus x. E is the equilibrium. Equilibrium is when you tie in your initial with your change. So 0.698 minus x would be 0.698 
minus x. 0 plus x is x. 0 plus x is x. Now we have our equilibrium line to solve for the Ka. So let's start it off. Ka equals, remember, Ka is products divided by reactants, and only aqueous material are allowed. But anytime that you see charged ions, that's always aqueous. So these two are coming along for the ride. And any weak acid or weak base, that's also aqueous as well. Remember, water is the one that we can't add in the Ka equation because that's a liquid. So in this case, we have the propionate times the hydronium divided by the propionic acid. So we have C2H5CO2 minus times H plus, and then I probably have to pull this out a little bit. C2H5 C, O2, H, beautiful. Now, whenever you see a Ka that's very small, meaning times 10 to the negative fifth or less, so like 10 to the negative sixth, 10 to the negative seventh, that means that at equilibrium, you're gonna favor mostly reactants. But here's the catch. If you start with all reactants and you end with mostly reactants, is this change gonna be great? No. It's probably going to be such a small number, this change, that you're probably going to end up with the same amount at the end. So since we're subtracting by a really, really small number, we want to get rid of the stress of doing the uh, quadratic equation. And with small Ka values, you just pretend that it doesn't exist. <laughs> so just for math purposes, we're probably going to get so close that you can get rid of these minus x's. However, we have to keep these x's that don't have minuses with them because if we get rid of these, where's the variable, right? We got to have at least a variable. Okay, so let's plug it in. 1.34 times 10 to the negative fifth, that's the Ka that they gave me, equals something divided by something, x times x over the initial, right? So x, x. 0.698. We can do cross multiplication here. And then x times x is x squared. So this times this. So we got x squared equals 1.34 times 10 to the negative fifth. What, what am I doing? Okay, 1.34 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0.698. I'm not going to round yet because that's not the answer. 9.3532 times 10 to the negative sixth. I want to get x by itself, so I take the square root. And now I'm going to get x equals. Okay, so maybe I'll round here. Uh, looks like they gave me three sig figs, so I'll give three sig figs back. So 3.06. If I put it into scientific notation, times 10 to the negative third. Okay. Now remember, the, the name of the game was to find the pH. And we said if we want to find the pH, we got to find the H plus concentration. And here is what the H plus was at equilibrium. Oh, it was just X. And that's what we found. So we just found that the H plus concentration is... 3.06 times 10 to the negative third. And that's molarity, because we use the ice table. So from there, I can use this equation ooh, to plug in for the pH. Maybe I'll just hook this over a little bit over here. So pH equals, and maybe, maybe if I can just bring this up a tad, there we go. Lovely. Negative log of 3.06 times 10 to the negative third. And there we go. We're going to find our pH. pH equals negative log of, I mean, technically that wasn't the answer as well, the H plus concentration, so I shouldn't have really uh, rounded it. 
So maybe I'll just take it from the unrounded number, negative log of that. And I get roughly 2.51. That sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, technically, it would be 2.515 uh, because if we have, actually, yeah, three sig figs, so you should have three sig figs at the end. So if we, if we wanted to play the sig fig game, but, you know, who cares at this point, right? 2.515. Is it 2.515? This four, the five rounds up the four to a five. Yeah. So 2.52, whichever one doesn't really matter to me. I really hope that this helped. Let me know in the comments if it did or not. Just gets the word back to me that I'm doing my job right. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. Let's keep working hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And if you wouldn't mind, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this great channel. Or if you just want to subscribe, that would mean the world to my brother and I. We currently have physics and math videos at the moment, but much greater things in store. So hang tight. See you all later. Bye-bye.